day three in the big Puffles house. Actually, it's not quite like that, I guess, um, because it's gone midnight amongst other things. Anyway, earlier we had the statement from the Chancellor of the Exchequer announcing £330 billion worth of financial support to the economy in kind of like loans and guarantees and a few grants and everything. And he got absolutely hammered by opposition MPs because uh, although he's done things for homeowners and business owners and what have you. He's done absolutely nothing in terms of the announcement for people who rent, people who are self-employed, uh, people who are unemployed and people who need statutory sick pay, but that it's not enough for them to live on. And so a lot of uh, members of parliament have been calling for things like a universal basic income or just something to give the renters peace of mind in particular because it's the self-employed and those on zero hours contracts, those working in the gig economy who are being made redundant first and they've got um, absolutely no income stream so how are they going to pay the rent? Other people have said uh, that the buy-to-let landlords are going to be the first to pocket the three-month mortgage holiday that they've got while demanding that the people who are renting their properties still pay up. Um, so it's seen as supporting the rich while not doing anything for the poor. And yet, as I mentioned yesterday, this virus does not have a political ideology. It clobbers everybody. Um, and so therefore, shouldn't the package of measures that are being brought in support absolutely everyone, irrespective of their status? Because at the moment, we do not have a vaccine. Um, I've also heard some absolute horror stories from the front line of the NHS of... Uh, um, basically key workers not having the kit or the equipment, particularly the protective clothing um, that they need in order to treat the people who are suffering really badly um, having been infected by the virus. Crazy straight of affairs. Um, some of you may rem remember kind of like 10, 15 years ago with the Iraq war and the interventions in Afghanistan um, of uh, British soldiers and newspaper stories of them not having the kit they needed to... Um, fight the um the conflict even though the line from the treasury was every request from the ministry of defense was all automatically just rubber stamped and paid through there was the criticism was that the soldiers needed time to train with the kit and get used to it before it was issued rather than just having it like issued in the field and we seem to have not learned that lesson which is depressing um so yeah um, there is going to be a huge political reckoning um, at the moment. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, I think the uh, government supporting print papers will be pleased with uh, how the Chancellor is handling himself. The Prime Minister has, uh, again, just getting absolutely clobbered, turning up to the press conference, you know, with his hair messed up and everything. You know, that's not the look that you really want to be uh, being given. Anyway, I mentioned um, that, well, in terms of what's happening here in Cambridge, a hundred years ago, the continent was hit by a major flu, flu pandemic. And one of the things I did today uh, was I put up a blog post on how Cambridge dealt with it in 1918. And one of the books I wanted to show you today is this one. It's by Sue Slack, uh, who's a uh, former archivist at the Cambridgeshire Collection, who basically wrote a, what I think is a wonderful introduction to the women who built modern Cambridge. Um, and in the blog post, there are a couple of the women that I've mentioned who are also mentioned uh, in this book, and one of them next to the first woman mayor of Cambridge, Eva Hartree, is this lady here. And that's uh, Edith Bethune Baker, who would become one of our first magistrates in um, um, in Cambridge's history, along with Florence Ada Keynes, Leah Manning and Clara Rackham. Florence Ada Keynes, our first woman councillor here. The mother of modern Cambridge, I've described her as. She was also the mother of uh, Maynard Keynes and got our Guildhall built while John Maynard Keynes, the economist, was building the Arts Theatre. I like to think the two of them were racing each other. Anyway, what I've gone and done, and it's worth for those of you who do have time to kill to um, get a subscription to the British Newspaper Archive uh, online because they've digitised about 30 million 
uh, pages of old newspapers. And if you want to find out, um, amongst other things, how your town uh, dealt with things like the flu pandemic of 1918, um, that's got the newspapers of the time. And so what I've gone and done is put in a blog post, is taken some screenshots and transcribed um, a couple of newspaper articles uh, in that blog post to basically say, look, when we were faced with a similar crisis that we were facing now, yes, schools closed, yes, businesses closed, um, yes, people were very, very worried. Um, you know, with the number of, in particular, with the number of children that were um, that were going going downhill, and yet we had some of the finest and most talented people in our town's history who got together and said, "No, we're going to deal with this," and in particular, we're going to look out for the poorest and most vulnerable people in society. And that was on an organisation called the Board of Guardians, who, amongst other things, were responsible for the oversight of the poor laws and the workhouses and the vice chairman of the board of guardians at the time this pandemic uh, hit was a certain archibald hill he was the daughter-in-law of florence ada keynes but he was also a nobel prize winner um and was one of the people who was involved in developing britain's first anti-aircraft capability um in response to the first air raids uh during the first world war um before that he was um, the musketry instructor for the Cambridgeshire Regiment because he was a damn good shot, basically. Um, he uh, joined um, uh, up effectively as a uh, reservist during his um, time in Cambridge and later went on to, um, to marry uh, Margaret, Florence's only daughter, uh, Margaret Hill, who actually became famous in her own time uh, uh, setting up a housing association in, in London where they later moved to. So... Do have a look at that if you are interested, and particularly if you're worried about, you know, how we're collectively responding to it, because although it's hugely worrying for a lot of us, um, uh, in particular with the number of deaths that have already happened and the, the, the trends that we're seeing and just how unprepared uh, it feels like we are after a decade of austerity, with the crisis you know, people with huge amounts of talents and gifts to give, just as in 1918, are coming together and are responding to it. And we did it before as a town in 1918. I'd like to think in 2020 we can do it again. I'll leave it there.